Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mini Art Talks. So glad to have you here today. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a wonderful artist. Let me get a good uh, picture of him here, uh, Goya. And uh, Goya was born in 1746, and he died in 1823. He's deservedly considered the most important Spanish painter and printmaker of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. He kind of um, comes in right before that era of modernism that, that I, I'm particularly par partial to. But And he's sometimes interestingly called the last of the old masters and the first of the moderns, and I think that's apropos. Now, in the beginning of his career in 1786, he became a court painter and uh, painted mostly portraits of the Spanish aristocracy. But then in 1807, the uh, uh, country of Spain um, was in a very uh, devastating war uh, with France, and this affected him deeply. And for the rest of his life, he created many works that depicted the horrors of war and also the, the consequences that he suffered personally, both to his mental and physical health. He did an entire series of prints called The Disasters of War, and he did a wide variety of other works. And they were all concerned with war or else insanity and mental asylums and witches and fantastical creatures and religious and political corruption all of these things um, fascinated him and, and uh, he recorded on his canvases. But it's in 1814 that his oil painting, the 3rd of May, uh, 1808, was done. And that's the one I'm going to talk to you about today. And the name of the painting is the 3rd of May, 1808. That's the name of the painting. And it was done in 1814. And it's at the Museo del Prado in Madrid. Now, um, what Goya uh, is doing in this uh, work and in a companion piece, I'm going to show you, I'll show that to you right now. This is its companion piece. He's um, seeking to commemorate the resistance that Spanish citizens had to the occupation of Spain by Napoleon's armies, and also the resistance to the fact that the French installed Joseph Bonaparte onto the Spanish throne. So this is a depiction. This is the second of, of the 2nd of May 1808 and this is what happened the day before the painting that I'm going to really talk about. This painting is uh, showing you the uprising as you can see the uh, Spanish citizens um, fighting the, the French uh, army and then the painting that I'm going to talk to you about today this one um, this uh, was co completed two months after that first one and as you can see, it's set in the early hours of the morning following that uprising, and it depicts this terrible revenge that Napoleon's troops exacted on all of these rebels, and also on innocent bystanders. Now let's take a look at it. The, the painting depicts two groups of men. First, you have these soldiers here, and they're poised, they're a very rigidly poised firing squad, and they're just ready to blast away, and as you can see, at point blank range um, against this now group, uh, this very kind of disorganized group of uh, captives that are being held here at gunpoint. And it, what Goya does, he makes the, the proximity of these two uh, groups uh, so, so close here, and that increases the horror of what's about to happen to these people with great dramatic effect. Now let's talk about some of uh, the figures that are here in this painting. First, let's look at this man here, and I'm going to get in a little bit closer so you can see him. Now his gray robes and his shaved head identify him as a friar of the Order of St. Francis. And look at his hands here. They're clasped kind of in this gesture of either, well, it is, it looks like supplication to me as, as, as if he's uh, begging. And um, it's very unlikely that he, being a friar, was actually involved in the uprising the day before. But that just... Uh, his inclusion in this painting is Goya telling us that um, what's happening here is random and arbitrary and, and very, very vicious. This retribution that's not just um, being in, uh, exacted upon the, the people who, who um, uh, created the violence against the troops, but also against in, innocence as well. 
Now this figure here is, I think, is especially haunting if you see him. Look at the whites of his eyes kind of glistening here with fear. And he's gnawing at his fingers because he can see what his fate is going to be in a few minutes. And at the immediate right in the center of the canvas here, you see these other condemned figures and they're standing next in line and knowing that they are about to be shot as well. Now on the right side of the painting, right, stands this firing squad. They're coming out of this encroaching shadow here. You see, they're kind of coming out of the shadow. And they're painted as kind of this monolithic unit here. And they, there's a real ominous rhythm to them here. It's like boom, 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 boom. You can almost hear their guns firing. Um, and this also is really haunting. Not only do they have guns, but the guns have fixed bayonets on them. And that adds yet another dimension of cruelty and horror to this picture. Because you know that if the guns don't do their job, then the, the soldiers are there just ready to use their blades to finish the job on these poor victims. And also with these soldiers, Goya does not show us their faces. They're in anonymous, they're timeless, they're just these mindless functionaries. They're carrying out orders of political and military superiors. And, and I think he's saying, that's what he's saying happens in these kind of situations. They're just carrying out uh, what the, the policies that others have set out. Now, the massacre of these people takes place during the night air into the early morning hours here. And you can see this very ominous, unrelenting sky here, which dominates the top third of the a picture. That's another way that Goya has established the mood of this painting. And also you have this very darkened townscape here, right, as well. And in the middle, this steeple kind of looms in the distance there. And we wonder, is the steeple the part of a church? Because the townscape would have a church, right? But if it is, there's no cross and there's no light coming from it. And I think personally that's deliberate that Goya is telling us that even God has abandoned these citizens. Now let's go back to the hope the entire painting here because I want to talk about this lantern here because it's a very important part of the painting. Um, it's situated on the ground between these two groups and it throws of course this very dramatic light on the scene and the brightest illumination of course falls on the victims, these, these huddled victims to the left and it also uh, casts these eerie shadows on their faces and that really intensifies the terror of all of these victims. Now the central figure here obviously is, is this brilliantly lit man here and he's kneeling as you can see here. He's kneeling amid all of these bloody uh, corpses that have fallen uh, before him that have been executed before him and look at how his arms are flung open here. Now that obviously is um, uh, a gesture of, of the crucified Christ and if you notice also, I'll get close here, notice the indentation on his right hand. It's almost like it's the, the stigmata that uh, Jesus suffered as well. And then also, if you look here, look at the, 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 this uh, body here, this corpse in the foreground. He's laying face down in this pool of blood. And look at his arms. They are echoing that gesture of this quote unquote crucified central figure. So Goya, by doing that, he's leaving us no doubt of what is going to befall um, uh, this gentleman here, that he's going to end up falling right on top of this person who has preceded him. Now, as I mentioned before, traditionally a, a very dramatic light source and the resulting shadows uh, were metaphors for the presence of God. But the illuminate and also illumination by torch or candlelight and a lot of these paintings always took on religious connotations. But in this painting, the source of the light, this lantern here, there that's it's no symbol, no religious uh, symbolism is found here. Um, in fact, what Goya is really doing is subverting the lantern's uh, the lantern's purpose because what its function is, what's allowing us to do is to see the grim work of this firing squad and provide us with enough illumination so that we can bear witness 
to what is about to occur, uh, which is wanton violence, really. Now, this painting influenced many artists afterwards. Uh, one in particular was Pablo Picasso, and everybody knows the Guernica, his um, painting of, um, of um, the horrors that befell this small town in uh, Spain when the Nazis um, bombed it for no good reason. It was a market town. There was no reason to bomb the town except to terrorize the population. And that's what, what uh, Picasso is doing here. And if you look at this figure here, you can see that it, it dire directly relates to the figure uh, in the Goya painting as well. So Francisco Goya's painting, the 3rd of May, 1808, is I think uh, in the annals of art history, a heartbreaking cry uh, for humanity against tyranny and brutality. And unfortunately in the year 2020, I fear it's a lesson that we still have not learned and that we're learning over and over again every day. So thank you for joining me. I wanna remind you again that you can uh, find my Art Talks page on Facebook where I post these talks as well as a, um, a lot of other interesting things I think that have to do with art and art history. And if you just put my name in the search bar, it'll come up. I'm also, I also have a YouTube channel, the same thing. Put my name in the search bar and you'll find the channel. And please subscribe. And then I'm also on, um, Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. You can find me there as well. And I have a web page. Um, this, my schedule for the spring uh, was there. And of course, it's now uh, defunct because everything has been canceled. But I have listed at the beginning on, of the schedules page, I have listed all of my online talks. Some of them have been rescheduled. And you can uh, hear longer uh, art history talks that I'm doing. Uh, some are free and some there's a nominal fee to help support the institution that's supporting, that uh, is um, uh, promoting it. But I hope that, uh, that you can join me there as well. So thanks for tuning in to um, Mini Art Talks, and I'll hope to have another one for you in the next couple of days. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now.